welcome to another episode of My Messy Ambulance. This is a, a six-wheel drive Parenti ambulance that we are working on. In case you haven't seen my other videos, it actually is a six-wheel drive. Everybody seems to wonder if the third axle actually does anything. All right, we have done a bunch of mods on this. Um, today we're working on the heater, um, but I did finish the draw last night, but I'll cover that in another episode later. Um, now this heater, I haven't successfully been able to make this work since we've had the ambulance. Now this heater recycles some uh, engine coolant through a heater core and up in here there's a heater fan switch and I've just headbutted the projector because there's not enough room. Alright, so I'll fix the projector and we'll keep filming. So back down at the heater. I'm not sure if this has blown a fuse or how we actually meant to operate this. I have the circuit diagram and I've traced the wiring and some of it does go back to the 12 volt system. So this might not fire up unless the engine's running, which would make sense considering it's using coolant. But I do need to make sure the fan's not jammed. The fuses aren't blown. So I'm gonna pull this off and have an, an inspect and see if the fan still spins and maybe probe with a multimeter. So let's find some tools. I think screws are a bit of an afterthought in this thing. They're always cockeyed. and a socket. Let's have a look here, see what size we need. Probably a U, which is a 14. All right, where's lefty Lucy mode? That's righty tighty. That's lefty Lucy. We can get you guys off. This is gonna take me a while by the feel of this bolt, so we'll be back in a minute. Screw it. I'm lazy. Let's get the rattle gun off this in setting number one so we don't destroy anything. I think I was going to be there for a while. Wow. Okay. They really didn't want this heater going anywhere. We'll be back in a minute. Right, we've got our bolts out. And it's as dusty as blazes in there, which is not surprising. That motor feels very stiff. And we've got a couple of different resistors in here. It looks like wire, homemade wire round resistors, I think, for the different speeds. But that fan feels like it could almost be seized. Which might explain why it's never moved. Now, the coolant loop on here, um, there is a cable controlled valve. You can just open that up and it will start running coolant through here, which is fine. Um, it's not going to help us a real lot if we can't have that fan running. Um, so that is going to be fun. I'm going to need to get that guy out in order to test it. Now, there is a grub screw I can take off there. I can probably pull that fan out to check, but that is not going to move um, if we put power onto it, which means it may have blown, if it's been stuck like that and it's been turned on for a while, it may have blown an armature too, which is not going to be great because the cold weather's just hit. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go consult the manual and see how to get the rest of this off. All right, we've done a few things since the last clip. We've taken the insulation pads off here. I took these four screws out in the corners here. The whole assembly moves, but is held in by the coolant pipes, it's to be expected. But crucially, the fan and fan motor moved with that body. So, that means I need to remove the fan motor 
from this body, which means I've got to get this Allen key in here and try and loosen this little grub screw up and get this fan blade off. Hopefully I should be able to access the mounting screws for the motor once I do that. Um, it is sort of tight quarter, tight cramped quarters in here, so we'll see how we go. Anyway, I'll be back once I get this off. Alright, the fan came off um, with great patience and some WD-40. Now, I need another socket. It just never ends with this, doesn't it? So, there we go, 14 off. Let's take the smallest one I've got here. Luckily, that will fit. And it's on as tight as shit, so... It's, uh... Dead in here. Well, that was actually a little easier than I thought. Alright, I've just seen the shaft of that motor fall backwards a bit. And there's a spring washer and stuff come off. We'll take them off. Maybe we'll be able to get our motor out the back now. It looks like it. I think I can reach through here. Where are we? Yeah, yeah, I can reach it from behind. That's what she said. Anyway, um... Now, if we have a look, it turns out our motor can actually be accessed through this little hole here, which is really nice. So, now, I've got to figure out how to unplug it. We'll be back. Right, so it turns out my motor plugs into the back of this little um, resistor assembly here, which appears to have been pop riveted on. What joy. All right. Um, See if I can just unplug it from the back. All right, so I was able to unplug one of the wires off the back of this little resistor block here. Um, this is the other wire to it, and it's crimped on. So I can pull that wire back through there. So I figure I'm just gonna leave myself enough room that I can recrimp it from a comfortable spot in here. That means I can crimp one wire this side, I can plug the other one in on the back. Makes getting it back in that much easier. Now I've got to find some side cutters, which I don't actually have on me, which means I've got to go inside. So let's go do that. I tell a lie. There was a pair of these guys in my toolkit, so let's do you. Let's see if I can extract the motor now. Try and pull you out through that little hole by the shaft. There's our motor. She looks like she might be full of crap. It is not an easily turning motor, so at least we can test that out now, uh, outside the vehicle. Oh, Alright, I think I'm going to give it a clean up first, and then I'm going to take it inside. Alright, it's the heater fan. I uh, actually stuck it under the hot tap, mostly because the uh, documentation indicated that it's a waterproof motor. It's still very stiff, much more so than I would expect just um, as a result of like a waterproof seal in there. So what we're going to do here, we're going to strip a little bit off this wire here, which is just breaking away here. Stupid plastic things in these things. Let's see if I can get this off. There we go. Now, um, we're going to whack a multimeter on here in ohms, um, probably at about the 200 ohm mark. We're going to check what kind of resistance reading we get in this unit if I can position my meter where you guys can see it. <clears throat> These terminals aren't looking great either. So, alright, let's have a look in here. So far I'm getting absolutely nothing on it. So I think maybe what's happened is the motor's seized and it's probably burnt out either one of the contacts or maybe the whole armature. Um, looks like there are two bolts that travel through this motor here. So we can probably undo a couple of these nuts and separate it. However, I might take this round to uh, my senior technician and see what he reckons we can do with it. That or I find a replacement motor, which might be the easier solution. I'm going to duck through the, uh, the documentation and uh, see if there's a part number for this and what they're worth. I just did something a little interesting. I uh, cut this connector off. 
and uh, then stripped a bit of wire off the other wire and when I do this we have some continuity which is good now um, I wonder what happens if we hook this up to 24 volts I can't see this spinning very freely um, I might open it up and have a look inside first Right, I had a chat to my senior technician and uh, yeah we had a look at this by the time I got to see him the magic sewing machine oil had done some of its work and it actually worked its way in here and it was turning it ran relatively well now short of actually dismantling this and checking all the brushes and everything um, he actually drilled a small hole in the back here and oiled the rear bearing and then sealed it up again so we're gonna whack this back in as is um, and see how we go so yeah now the way I'm gonna join this up I have some solderless butt joins to do the black wire here and I have some new spade terminals for the other side that I might solder one of them on first but before we can do any of that we're gonna clean this stuff up which I'm not sure if I'm gonna use air compressor or vacuum cleaner or what but it's nasty in there so I think I might get the stick back into it to start with and then we'll go from there and see what else we can shake out of it. Yeah, I'm going to need the air compressor. I've got our extended air line out here. And I've got a uh, mains fan running up above, hopefully to blow the dust back out. So that it doesn't settle all over the beds. Because this is likely to be very messy. Let's see how we go. Yep. Alright, and it's all blowing back in here. Not going to be fun. But give me a minute to think about this. Right, I think that's got most of it. Now I've got to go and dust off the beds. Right, I've given the fan blades a dose in some soapy water. I'm going to keep giving it a wipe down with a moist rag. Hopefully I'll get the rest of this clean eventually. I missed a couple of fins by the looks. Um, but yeah, just got to get in here and some of this stuff just is tedious and takes time to scrub. Um, we are going to take the fan bay here and give it a bit of a clean up. Let's try and reduce as much dust in here as we can try and get it nicely cleaned up it's looking quite a bit better at least the rest of the ambulance on the other hand has got a fine layer of red dust on it so it's been in the desert somewhere I think the previous owners at least took it through the desert too so anyway um, now I do have to put the relay fan back in now there's the speed resistors in here I've got to give a bit of an adjust so they don't touch each other all right, <coughs> and I've got to spray them with a bit of contact cleaner too. Um, I'll do the body and all that stuff later. I'll rinse that with a hose. It's starting to get a little bit on the darker side, so I want to get this fan in. So uh, what I might do is I'll get my terminal hooked onto this, crimped on, and uh, maybe soldered as well. And then we'll, uh, we'll thread our black wire through and see where we go from there. 
And just like that, we have our terminals attached. All right. So I'm going to do this one first. Um, yeah, we've got to peel some wire off this. I should probably go and get my proper tools, but I think we can probably strip this guy like this. Um, let's have a look. These are relatively sharp, and this is not the recommended way. There we go. Oh, and that's got a push connector in it. Ah. Ah. You bastards. Right. Well, I can join it to that one then. All right, I will get my proper tools for that one. We'll be back. All right. There's my cutters. I got my proper tools, but I grabbed the wrong tool out of my proper tool. Tool. I can say that a few times. Um... See. Hopefully you don't shoot off into the middle of nowhere. Stick my hand behind here to hold this in. All right, hello. Now that should be enough to achieve my goal. We're going to need this guy. One of these. Oh God, I can never get into these packets. Right. Straighten that bit of wire out a little bit and shove one of you guys on. Now I'm going to need a heat source. Let's organise that first. But, uh, this heat source is probably a bit of overkill, but if we're gentle with it, it should work. Now we've got to insert motor in from the rear. We're going in by the rear, guys. And I've got to not get my hand stuck at the same time. That uh, could be a bit of a challenge. Now, there's our twisty wire here. Alright. There we go. There's our two wires, and almost got my hand stuck. So this light's got to turn back around and go onto that one. Alright. This is where we end up with unusually long cuts, just because it's a challenge to do this. Alright, that. I'm going to have to stay there, I'm going to have to do this bit one-handed. Alright, a little bit of heat happening here. Hopefully we don't burn anything in the process, like my drill. We want to get these wires overlapping nicely here. Alright. Come on, low melt solder, melt in there, please. Yep. Alright, well, looks like that melted in. I really hope it did. Otherwise I'll have to turn it over and give it a remelt from the other side. Alright. Yeah, we kind of overheated it, but that's alright. I'll hold this here till it cools off. Of course I can't stop the recording while I'm doing that. Alright, it's cool enough. Okay. Now it's cool, we can shove it back through the hole. Now the bit you can't see, I have to get that positive wire onto the back of the speed control block, which has pop riveted in. Um, and then we can position the fan motor back in there. All right, guys, um, I'm down here with my hand stuck up on here, but I might've done the impossible. I might've got it in first time round. So, I think that's on. So now I'm gonna go and pick the motor up from inside that hole down there and try and position it and get those washers and nuts back on. Let's see if it works. All right. Let's see how good we can be here. Where's our nut and bolt there? There's one. There's two. All right, now, um, we had a washer a spring washer and then a nut on each of these all right now um, before I put all this together I'm having a think while I'm doing this I might leave the fan off for the second 
and I'll go and put the fan relay in which involves me removing a flasher can and modifying it so that they can fit next to each other and then uh, we'll see if we can make this actually spin before I do much else so alright I'll leave it just finger tight for now and uh, that way we can pull it out and inspect if I've got something wrong okay to do the relay it brings us to this panel which is near the front end and uh, a heater is way down here there is a heater fan relay in here now fuse number five here is our heater fan and it looks to be okay I will pull it out and clean that socket in a minute so heater fan control there's a relay in there that we want to get to so I'm gonna pull them all out I'm gonna use this sorry about the background noise but the fans are keeping the dust from settling in here which is very preferable right at the moment so I'm gonna get this off and then I'll show you the inside okay, so we have our panel off and there is yet more red dust in this now here's the flasher can here this slot here is for the air conditioner relay which we have right here. I'm not sure if the air conditioner relay has anything to do with a heater fan, but I'm gonna pull the flasher can out for the moment, plunk the air conditioner relay in and see if things work. Right, so, the switch is working. Um, I plugged the a wire in off the indicator light that was disconnected, but uh, being as my kettle over here is boiling now, I think I'm gonna stop for a cuppa and have a bit of a think. So, made myself a hot chockey, and I've had a bit of a sip and a think. So I thought I can identify whether the voltage is working. A couple other tests I've done first before I got to this point. I turned the fan switch on and the red light came on. I then pulled the fuse and the red light went off. So I infer from that that the fuse is fine. So, I'm going to come back down this end. I'm going to find a ground point with a negative probe. I'm going to touch these little wire and resistor thingies here and we've got some voltage on them at this guy I haven't got my ground properly here we go let's have a look here yep here we go I've got 15 volts on this one 16 I run my way down the voltage changes and drops this one we've got about 15 this guy we've got about 13 so it all says we've probably got it set in a low speed. 12 volts is still enough. Um, but what it tells me is maybe I didn't get my pin on the fan. Or the fan pin on that spade terminal the way I thought I did. Not the first time anyway. So I'm going to have to rip it off and try again. Something interesting I discovered. We're going to fly down and have a close up look in here. This little block here. Now if I find myself a ground point again if I touch right here on one side of a diode I have 14 volts which that's the other side of what I think is a diode I've got 150 millivolts that guy might be shagged now um, I'm not sure what would happen if I short it out but I'm gonna go get a clip lead and see what happens try smoke test time we're gonna clip on to the one that is hardest to get to first um, I don't know what I'm going to likely to short out here if I do this. Let's go here. Clipped onto that one. Now let's bring our wire over here and touch on this side. Ah. I think our diode is shagged. Let's leave that bypassed. And then I'll go adjust the speed on the other end. Sounds like I found the problem. Alright, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to solve this, but I think what I'm going to do here is bend these guys out of the way, give me slightly better access. I'm going to snip out that offending component. Um, and then I'm going to find a way to try and solder something back in there. Alright, this guy's got to come out. Not entirely sure what that guy actually is, whether it's a thermal fuse, but let's take it inside and have a look at it up close. Right, we're back inside and uh, my apprentice has taken over the charging port in here, so you'll have to deal with the noise. Let's have a look here. Um, 
Oh, I can't really read this, so it's a patent pending um, micro something or another. I'm going to look at this in the microscope. So this thing says micro temp on it. So I think it's like a little thermo fuse or a little thermistor or something. So maybe that heat has got too hot at some point and it's popped. Um, so for the time being, I'm going to bridge that out until I can find a replacement. So uh, yeah, I think I'll find a bit of wire and solder that in there. And um, I'll put a new one in when I can figure out where it should, where I can get one from. Anyway, this will at least leave it working for the cold weather. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. So, the absence of being able to replace it, I think I'm going to just bridge it out. Um, I'm going to get a pair of pliers in here. When I'll find out where my pliers went. <clears throat> I think I need a pair of little baby pliers. And, um, like the ones on here. I'm basically just going to stretch these wires till they can touch. And then put a touch of solder on them. Do that slightly parallel to each other and I'll hit it with some um, oh, I bent that one did not do that too much um, I think probably what's happened is this thing's got clogged with dust so much that it's had an overheat incident and that has popped the little thermo fuse so I think I'll have to be careful of that all right now I'm gonna hit that with some contact cleaner and put some solder in there See how we can do this. This is going to be difficult to get in this hole this way. Oh, ah. We'll get it. Open that soldered together. It did not. Might need to actually get some flux gel onto this. This is flux core solder, but it also it's not perfect stuff. Keep trying. We're just got to get it nice and hot. I might have done it. Let's have a look. It's on there pretty solidly. I think that's all right. Now you might criticize my solder joint here uh, for being a little flimsy. That is somewhat on purpose. If things do get a little bit overloaded here, there's a good chance that that will burn out. And at the very least make a loud noise that I'll pick up on and go, hey, that's probably not right. All right, at this stage, we can get these nuts tightened up and um, we'll get the fan blades back on. out a bit alrighty now let's go and get let's do this back on again fan blades on time to test I think it works. Right, we got the cover, which I've just given a good clean up. Um, we can put that over the top, although we've got to put our foam strips back in. I'm not sure what these foam strips are really meant to do here, other than insulate it from the front of the cabin. And I think I'm going to have to stick them on with something. Maybe some double-sided tape or something. Anyway, yeah, they're meant to go on over the top. So let's sort that out and uh, put the cover on. Cover back on. Now, lesson learnt, I'm going to take these bol bolts and put just a little touch of WD on them. Back them through the hole here. Much easier to go in. Alright, now, because I'm lazy again, let's use our rattle gun on minimum setting. 
to avoid damaging stuff. Right, now I'm going to use the ratchet for the rest of it. Do this righty tighty mode. We're going to be here for a while. There's my little mini screwdriver. Right there. Did that just fall out? Oh, it did too. Wow. Okay. I'm going to take a few attempts at this and uh, we'll be back when I don't need two hands. All right, so everything's on. We're going to test it, but that requires me running the engine and warming it up, which I will do soon. But it's five o'clock and that means it's happy hour at my 96 year old neighbor's place. So it's time to go in and check on him and make sure he's doing all well and have a bit of a chat. So we'll be back in an hour or so. Uh, for you guys, that will be pretty quick, somewhere about now. All right, so the time has come to start the engine and warm things up. And uh, I can do a bit of a clean up while I'm waiting for it to warm up. I've been for a walk around the block and I can feel that it's warm. Let's turn the fan on and get the thermal imager on it. Right. It's definitely throwing out warm air. It's not going to be real warm, but we'll see. Let's have a look around here. Well, I can see some warm air coming out of it. Um, let's take a snapshot here. I've got to remember how to do this. I think I can go pull the trigger and it'll take a snapshot here. Yeah, it's hard to see. But we're putting out about, um, you know what? I think I can take a picture here. Take a picture and I'll confirm that I'm gonna save it. Cool. The yeah, she's coming out at about 40 degrees. It's cooling off now, but it takes a lot to warm this engine up. So we're doing pretty well. All right, I think we call that a win. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one. I've got to put a latch on this because this drawer keeps sliding out. So that'll be part two. Anyway, see you all later.